IoT, Internet of Things, machines are talking to each other, like cars for example. So it's an entry door and harm for cybercrime. Who can tell me more is a person at the James Cook University. He's not only a senior lecturer, he also created cryptographic security products for IoT devices and he's a hacker. From a developer of security products to a hacker. Steve, what do you do exactly? So I'm a senior lecturer in cybersecurity here and so that means I teach cybersecurity to our students but also I hack things in order to figure out what weaknesses exist within them and how to make them more secure as well. Can you show me an example of how you hack? Yes, sure. Um, I have a video here of some of the hacking that I do. Pull up a chair. So you're teaching your pupils and students how to hack? Yeah, so we teach ethical hacking, of course. We want people to learn how to hack, but do so without being evil. Um, and so this is an example of some of the research I do. Um, this is actually a smart padlock with a fingerprint reader that has been deconstructed, taken apart, and I've found some issues with it that allow me to turn it into a device that steals people's fingerprints. If I press the shackle down, this activates it. If I press it again, I activate Bluetooth mode. I think this is what the PCB looks like. Um, pressing the shackle actually presses this button here, and it's now waiting for me to provide a fingerprint. Once I've provided that fingerprint, it will transfer that from its buffer over Bluetooth BLE to the host machine, which you can see happening now. We will see that a fingerprint appears. I will obfuscate that to some degree, as that's my own fingerprint. Your phone really secures your fingerprint and yeah. keeps the, the fingerprint data safe, yeah. but other devices don't necessarily. So the idea behind this research is use a vulnerable device to extract the fingerprint information and then you can actually recreate a fingerprint from that and impersonate someone. It, it's not as easy as say stealing someone's password but issues like this in cheap devices can cascade and affect the more expensive devices and the more expensive or more um, valuable resources we want to protect like our bank account. Currently at the moment where do we stand with cybersecurity in general? In general, in recent years, the awareness has really increased. So unfortunately, that's because a growing number of companies and individuals have suffered from some kind of cyber attack, like ransomware, denial of service. My philosophy has always been, if you can't do cybersecurity simply and easily, people will always find a way around it because people are lazy, right? We don't want things to get in the way of what our objective is. And usually it's... Um, a case of understanding what the user wants to do or what the business wants to achieve and finding a way of making the solution still fit within that workflow. Maybe give me an example. Yeah, so I mean, let's take two-factor authentication uh, where you might have to take out your phone and type in a code. Um, with some of the authentication apps now, they use push notification, right? So you're logging in and then your phone lights up and you just click a button, authenticate. It makes it slightly easier than finding a separate piece of hardware or waiting for an email or a text message. These things that just reduce the time by maybe only seconds just improve the user experience and make people have a more positive view of that cybersecurity feature. And that helps it stick around and actually add value. Talking about IoT, machines more connected in a modern world, is it more harmful for cybersecurity? Well, yes, because we've had examples such as a casino in Las Vegas being hacked through the IoT device that was monitoring the temperature of their fish tanks <laughs> and employee data being stolen as a result. So all these additional devices, many of which are small and low power and often ignored by traditional IT teams, create a new attack surface that um, uh, villains, let's say, can get in through. Today's call to action. Let's ask Dr. Steve, what's your recommendation for the community? Well, when you are at home or at work, think about the smart devices you're interacting with and ask yourself, how do I know that this is actually a secure device?